You're on deck with Ursula Camille, and this is The Triage Room. The Triage Room is a podcast that encourages and empowers listeners to overcome obstacles of pain. Pain is the physical suffering or discomfort caused by illness or injury. When we describe the type of pain we're having, we're really describing the symptoms. Once we identify the symptoms, then we can deal with the roots. Welcome to The Triage Room. You're now on deck with Ursula Camille, and this is the Triage Room. Today's topic, Sometimes It's All an Act, Part 2. The World Book Dictionary says that act is to behave, to perform, play a part, to pretend. In order to identify one is pretending, we must be able to discern, which means to recognize or perceive clearly, and to perceive differences. In the last episode, we learned that Absalom had his servants kill Amnon, his brother, for the sin against their sister Tamar. After Amnon's death, Absalom fled and was in exile for three years. Now we're going to see how Joab, David's nephew, came up with this plot to reconcile David and Absalom. Let's take a look at 2 Samuel chapter 14 verses 1 through 3. Now Joab, the son of Zeruah, perceived that the king's heart was toward Absalom. And Joab sent to Tekoa and fetched thence a wise woman and said unto her, I pray thee, fiend thyself to be a mourner and put on now mourning apparel and anoint not thyself with oil, but be as a woman that had a long time mourned for the dead and come to the king and speak on this manner unto him. So Joab put the words in her mouth. In verse 1. We see that Zeruah was David's sister, which makes Joab David's nephew. Joab was also the commander of King David's army. Now perceived in this verse means to understand, to know, to discern. The king's heart towards Absalom means David's heart longed for Absalom and he wanted to forgive him for his wrongdoing. Like Joab, have we ourselves voluntarily became the mediator and meddled in situations with family, etc. because we felt we knew the heart of others and we wanted them to feel a false sense of obligation to us. In verse 2, Joab sent to Tekoa, a city 12 miles south of Jerusalem and 7 miles south of Bethlehem. So he went outside the city to get a woman who was wise, intelligent, skillful, and cunning to be an actress and play the part of a widow so David would have compassion. Don't be deceived based on the outward look of what one is wearing. This woman wore mourning apparel to look the part. She made sure she did not wear perfumes and did not anoint herself with oil to make sure she looked as a genuine mourner. She dressed and acted like she had been a mourner for a long time. Mourning apparel, grieving apparel, Have we ourselves gone to the extent of bringing others into our plan to gain based on the issues in the heart of others or witness others to do the same? Verse 3, put the words in her mouth. He told her what to say. Have we put words in the mouth of others to deceive others and work our plan in the background? Joab could have talked to David directly about the issue at hand himself. Beware of those that send others speaking as if they are speaking their own words. Listen closely so you can discern who was really speaking. Let's take a look at verses 4 through 12. And when the woman of Tekoa spake to the king, she fell on her face to the ground and did obeisance and said, Help, O king. And the king said unto her, What aileth thee? And she answered, I am indeed a widow woman, and my husband is dead. And thy handmaid had two sons, and they two strove together in the field. And there was none to part them, but the one smote the other and slew him. And behold, the whole family is risen against thine handmaid. And they said, Deliver him that smote his brother, that we may kill him for the life of his brother, whom he slew. And we will destroy the heir also. And so they shall quench my coal, which is left, and shall not leave to my husband, neither name nor remainder upon the earth. And the king said unto the woman, Go to that house, and I will give charge concerning thee. And the woman of Tekoa said unto the king, My lord, O king, the iniquity be on me, and on my father's house, and the king and his throne be guiltless. And the king said, Whosoever saith aught unto thee, bring him to me, and he shall not touch thee any more. 
Then said she, I pray thee, let the king remember the Lord thy God, that thou wouldest not suffer the revenges of blood to destroy any more, lest they destroy my son. And he said, as the Lord liveth, there shall not one hair of thy son fall to the earth. Then the woman said, let thine handmaid, I pray thee, speak one word unto my Lord, the king. And he said, say on. In verse four, obesity means to fall down flat. This shows her approach to him. Just because one comes with the right approach does not mean what they come with in their presentation is right and sincere. In verse five, David now asks, what is troubling her? What is wrong with her based on her presentation? In verse five through 12, we see that then she comes with the act and long drawn out story that was pre-planned by Joab. If David would not have asked her what was wrong with her, there may have never been an opportunity for conversation. Who have we entertained based on their approach? And there was a hidden agenda the entire time. How many situations could have been avoided if we did not allow ourselves to get pulled in by the deceiving ways of others? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thy own understanding. and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Let's read verse 13 and verse 14. And the woman said, Wherefore then hast thou thought such a thing against the people of God? For the king doth speak this thing as one which is faulty, in that the king doth not fetch home again his banished. For we must needs die, and are as water spilt on the ground, which cannot be gathered up again. Neither doth thy God respect any person, yet doth he devise means that his banished be not expelled from him. In verse 13, we now see she received a promise from David that her son would not be killed. Then she began to address or lead into the situation with David and Absalom. In verse 14, now we see so since life is uncertain and can't be restored and God sets the example of mercy and shows no partiality, David should be reconciled with his son before it's too late. Here we have one who is being deceptive by acting like she is this person in distress, speaking on things of God and what would be best. Let's look at verse 15 through 20. Now, therefore, that I am come to speak of this thing unto my Lord, the king, it is because the people have made me afraid. And thy handmaid said, I will not speak unto the king. It may be that the king will perform the request of his handmaid. For the king will hear to deliver his handmaid out of the hand of the man that would destroy me and my son together out of the inheritance of God. Then that handmaid said, the word of my Lord, the king shall now be comfortable for as an angel of God, so is my Lord, the king to discern good and bad. Therefore, the Lord thy God will be with thee. Then the king answered and said unto the woman, hide not from me, I pray thee, the thing that I shall ask thee. And the woman said, let my Lord, the king now speak. And the king said, is not the hand of Joab with thee in all this? And the woman answered and said, As thy soul liveth, my lord the king, none can turn to the right hand or to the left from aught that my lord the king hath spoken. For thy servant Joab, he bade me, and he put all these words in the mouth of thine handmaid. To fetch about this form of speech hath thy servant Joab done this thing. And my lord is wise, according to the wisdom of an angel of God, to know all things that are in the earth. In verse 15 through 16, she went into speaking why she was there. Now that she had his attention, she went to speaking more. And in verse 17, after sharing, she then comes with the flattery to smooth over what she does not want seen. Reminders of who we are may be done for one reason, yet will wake us up to the truth within that yes, I am this or yes, I am that, etc. Sometimes there are those who will speak flattery mixed with truth. And when you discern what is said, like David did, then it ignites in you that, oh yeah, I do discern good and bad. And speaking of that, let me ask you a question. Verse 18 through 20, the question that reveals truth and exposes that you know who is behind all of this. Also, the woman came clean. And in verse 20, she still spreads it on thick with flattery to make sure she does not reap any consequences for what she has just done. How many people go through so much to deceive you? And when you expose the deception, they admit it and then begin to wiggle their way out with the same tongue they use to enter into the deception. You may find yourself in the presence of those who do things, who say things, and it's somebody else that's behind it. Those are not their words. It's somebody else's words. Just like the woman putting on the act. 
the, the wise woman that Job sought out to do this thing, to come before David with this story, this whole act. Job had a plot behind it. Job, Job had a strategy that he was planning to use to bring David and Absalom back together. And he went through all of this work to bring this woman. He gave her the words to say. He told her what to wear. He told her how not to be so that she would present herself as a true mourner, a true widow, you know, that, that David would believe the words coming from her mouth. And she was skilled in what she did. And by her being so good at it, you know, I'm sure it wasn't the first time she put, you know, did something like this. But she was skilled in what she did. And there are those who are good at deceiving. There are those who are good at acting. There are those who are good at putting on an act for an end goal. The whole focus the entire time is on the end result. They're not counting up that things will, they're not counting up the fact or considering that maybe what they're doing is not going to work. When Job came up with this plan, he wasn't considering the outcome may be not what he wanted it to be. And though we stopped at verse 20, it did not turn out the way Job wanted it to turn out. His plan backfired. It didn't work. And how many people have put in all this work, all this effort for this grand plan, put the words in somebody else's mouth to come into your presence so there could be a common goal, a common thread, something where you both are in the same area or, or have experienced the same things in life to then get you to kind of open up, to get you to connect with the person that you're in the presence of. Knowing that none of what they're saying is the truth. It's all an act. It is just a tool used or a tactic, a strategy used for an end goal to get whatever the person that's behind it, whatever it is they're seeking after. And like this woman, this wise woman from, from Tekoa, she was part of the plan. And she allowed herself to be used in this. And David was in the presence of someone who was acting. She knew what to say. Job was his, his family member. Job was his nephew. So he knew his uncle. Like, okay, I know my uncle. I know what to say to him to get him to listen and not have you on his radar. But however, the plan didn't work. David still ended up discerning that these were the words of Job. Here's my moment of transparency. I myself have been in a situation where someone was sharing words and they presented it as if it was coming from them and they came bearing a gift, a token of their appreciation. But as they began to talk and as I sat and I listened, just like David, I perceived this is not coming from them. These are not their words. This token is of a small gift is a decoy and there's somebody else behind this and I perceived it I discerned it so I have experienced what it is for someone else to give someone you're in the presence of the words they might not be physically present the person that's behind it but the person that's doing the act they're allowing themselves to be used by another party we have to discern who we are in the presence of we have to discern, is this genuine? And not get caught up with flattery. Not get caught up. Because just as the woman told King David, you know, being able to discern good and bad, you know, someone can come who has studied you. Someone can come and say certain things. They know just what to say. You can have a man talking. He's the one talking to you. But there's a woman behind him. It's her words. And somebody will say, well, why would a woman be talking through a man? Because a woman may feel like she knows, okay, a woman's going to do this. So this is what you need to do. This is what you need to say. And the man is using that. Okay, well, she's a woman. But the, the key is, maybe this woman that's be speaking through him, she don't know the woman he's talking to. And that was my experience. You know, the one talking to me, come bearing a gift, saying certain words, I deserve who was behind it. Because they chose to listen to somebody else who don't even know me like that. And I knew this wasn't genuine. I knew this wasn't coming from a good place. I knew there was somebody else behind it and I discerned in the middle of it all. So I encourage you, when someone's coming with flattery, don't get caught up with that. If David would have got caught up with, you know, the king can discern between good and bad. If he would have got caught up with all of that, David know what he's capable of doing. Will you know who you are? Will you know your skill set? Will you know what you know you bring to the table? You don't need to be reminded. And so somebody's coming and they're they throwing it on thick. Reminding you as if you don't know. 
unless you suffer from low self-esteem, unless you suffer from inadequacy, or you suffering from something that's going to keep you from knowing who you are and not really walking in your true identity, then that might, you know, have you sitting, taking it all in and being deceived. But when you know who you are and you know what you bring to the table and someone's coming as if you don't already know that, hold on, wait a minute. And you listen to the words and here we have a family member, a nephew, and David perceived it. Now, David didn't, you know, take any ill action towards it. However, it could have gone another way. And sometimes there are people, it's all an act. They say the right thing. They know exactly what to say to you. They know exactly what to do. And Joab knew exactly what to tell this woman to do. Now look, when you go, wear this. When you go, don't do this, say this. He gave her the whole plan. And he used somebody who wasn't scared. He used somebody that was bold enough to do it. He used somebody that came so she didn't have any, you know, timidness about her. So she came right on in. She knew exactly what to do. And she was good at acting. She was good at what she was doing. King David was approached by a woman acting as a widow. The words she spoke were of Joab. Joab came up with this plan to have the woman act as a widow and tell King David this story so he would be moved to pardon his own son Absalom, who had his brother Amnon killed for the crime against their sister Tamar. David discerned that Joab was behind all the woman was saying. Just like King David, sometimes we may find ourselves faced with people who look the part, sound the part, and as they come with a great story that covers the hidden plan of another, we have to discern to know the difference between what is genuine and what is all in act. Let us pray. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus, Lord, just to say thank you. Lord, I thank you for life, health, and strength. Father, I ask you, Lord, that those that may have been in the presence of one God that are using the words of another, those that are being deceived, Lord, by those that are presenting themselves to be something that they're not, that, Lord, their eyes be open to the truth, no longer receiving the deception that they've been in the presence of. Lord, I'm asking you right now, Father, that the deceiver be exposed, that whoever's behind it, God, who's ever the one, the puppet master, be revealed, Lord, in the name of Jesus. That the plots and the schemes and the plans of others that are voluntarily making themselves mediators, God, meddling in things, Father, that are none of their affairs, none of their business. I'm asking you, Father, that people begin to use wisdom, focus on the things that they need to focus on. Stay out of the affairs of others. Stay out of the things, God, that don't concern them. That, Lord, those that have been exposed to someone who's been putting on an act. Saying words, saying things, doing things, Lord, that's not even them because they're allowing themselves to be used by someone else as part of another person's plans. I'm asking your father to, to allow them, Lord, to just walk in truth, bind up the deception, the work of the enemy in the name of Jesus. The things, father, that are falsehoods, the things, father, that are untruths, the things, father, that are deceptive. I bind them up now in the name of Jesus. And for the one God whose eyes shall be open to the truth. I ask you, Lord, to give them strength, to give them strength, God, to see the truth. Give them strength, God, to receive the truth. Give them strength, Father, to do whatever is right, to do, Father, what is right in your eyes. Whatever is being revealed to them in this hour or that will be revealed, that, Father, you will give them the strength to continue to move forward. Lord, I thank you, Father, for what you're doing in this hour. I give your name, the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You all be blessed. Thank you for joining me on deck in the triage room. To get the music you hear in this podcast or to stay connected, visit my website, UrsulaCamille.com. That's U-R-S-E-L-A-C-A-M-I-L-L-E.com. Sign up on my email list, get merch and more. Have an area of pain you want to address in the triage room? Send your email to thetriageroom at gmail.com. I'm your host, Ursula Camille, signing off. Be blessed. Want to achieve life change? Did you know that Jesus reigns? Did you know that Jesus reigns? Want to achieve life change?